Hey guys, welcome back to Ken's Chop Shop. On today's video, I'm gonna work on finally installing these cable, or stainless steel cable handrails. Well, not handrails, but the cables for the handrails up on the mezzanine. I already started laying stuff out a little bit, just kind of get an idea what, what I'm doing before I started recording anything. A um, couple things I realized I messed up on doing was, uh, well, let me turn the camera in and I'll show you so far, well, what I've got so far. So, uh, the stuff I've got that I ordered, and I'll, I'll I'll try to put the links from Amazon in the uh, in the description below. But these are the turnbuckles, the uh, right and left ones, and it gives gives you a little. Um, it's Steel DN Mate is the brand on Amazon. Uh, this is the turnbuckles for the cables. Um, I got these little. Um, stainless pieces that slide in that slide into the post um for well actually they're just for that for that center one for the through post for the cables to go through it and it comes with a drill bit for those i don't know if y'all can see that um i also bought this angle guide block i don't really need it for these upstairs ones but when i do the when i do the handrail going down the steps at the bottom i'll probably need that I bought this hydraulic crimper, which I've actually used it a bunch for crimping wire since I've bought it. Um, the kit came with with these cable cutters and then a spool of, I forget how long it was, uh, 400 foot of stainless steel cable, uh, let's see, uh, eighth inch, eighth inch uh, diameter stainless steel cable. It says it has 1800 pound braking strength, seven by seven strand construction. Anyway, uh, and there's the drill bits. There's the drill bits that came with the, the turnbuckles. Um, so anyway, uh, I ordered all that stuff months and months and months ago. Uh, I don't know about a year ago, but probably seven or eight months ago at least. Uh, after I ordered it and put and I finally put the handrail because I did that before I actually built the mezzanine or finished building the mezzanine once I put these handrails up um, and got really like looking into the into the spacing on the cables and um, you know the span you can go to meet code uh, I'm not worried about code but to meet code is uh these this this spacing is just a little bit too far and i didn't want to have i didn't want to put two more posts in here because i didn't i didn't want it to look weird from below because these well i just didn't want i didn't want a bunch of posts in the way um so i found these aluminum uh they just kind of keep the cables spaced they're already pre-drilled and everything i put this first one in uh, just a minute ago just to see if I could even get it in because the little plastic pieces that that need to screw into the well let me open I'll open this other one up and you can see them let's see yeah. set this down so y'all can see while I'm opening it oh, shit. so here's the post you know it's it's pre-drilled all the way through for for the holes and spaced so i'm going to use once i cut this one i'm going to use it as my spacer to mark all the posts so i can cut them So it comes with these two screws, pretty coarse thread with uh, the square drive in them, and these plastic, these plastic um, anchors that go into the you know put put these on the floor and, and on the bottom of the handrail. Uh, I didn't realize they were so tight. Like it, it has to like. I don't know if y'all can see that. It's uh, super tight. Like it has to basically destroy it, and, and you really need to hammer them down on there. I thought it was going to be a looser fit and I'd be able to pick the post or pick the handrail up a little bit and um, 
you know, get the bottom in, pick the handrail up and then swing it over and get the top in. Well, that is not the case. Um, so I'd already did, I already did this first one just so I could see if I even could do it because I'd already, um, screwed these rails down and, and filled the holes and painted everything and it's all caulked and I wasn't taking the handrail back off. So what I ended up doing was I, I cut it and got it ready to fit and screwed it on and I hammered the bottom one in and I took this, this board here and I'll show you when I do the next one. Uh, I, um, you know, put it in on an angle and cause it's about three inches longer than, than the metal post. And I just hammered it in and wedged the rail up and finished knocking the top or knocking the bottom down in and then line the top up and slowly knock the I slowly knock the the board back out with the pole, or metal post lined up and uh and then hammered you know set the board on top of the handrail and hammered it down to to lock it in um so that one's locked in it's definitely not coming back out um so I'm gonna go ahead and set y'all up on a time lapse real quick I've already marked I've already marked this other one out so I know where to put the screws at for them you know top and bottom uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the post down because it's it's um, a couple inches longer you can see it's it's taller than the it's hard to see because everything's black but it's uh, a few inches longer and I I positioned it so the bottom hole is up. I don't know if y'all can see that. The bottom hole is up a couple inches from the floor. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to put anything in that one, obviously. Uh, so that one will be underneath the rail where nobody will really see it unless you're sitting down behind us. But I'm not worried about that. So I'm going to mark this one and cut it off. And then I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use this as my drill guide for all these other ones so that way every cable is spaced exactly the same before i install this one but i'll show you how i put this one in later and i'll but anyway i'm gonna put you on time lapse and we're gonna start i'm gonna cut this down i'm gonna cut this thing down and then i'm gonna go ahead and mark all the posts so i can start drilling them um and we'll go from there i'll come back when there's something worth talking about all right All right, so I have drilled all the holes in the post for the turnbuckles, like these smaller holes. I drilled, used a smaller bit for the, the holes for the turnbuckles. These ones on the center post, the cables are gonna pass through all the way to that end post and the little metal posts. These ones, I started with this, or well, that's not this one. I started with the, this drill bit that they supplied and went all the way through the post on both sides and then used uh, it's hard to see it then I used this larger bit that they supplied with these to fill those holes like that so then the cable will go through these on both sides to give it a nice finished look and then the turnbuckles will go into the other ones so the next the next thing I'm going to do is put all these little collars in these in this center post. I'm going to, I'm going to show you all how I put, I'm putting this other post in this other aluminum post in now that I'm done using it as a jig, a drilling jig. Um, so yeah, so let's do that first. Let's put that post in and then we'll come back to getting set up to do the cables all right so now we're going to put this second aluminum post in um to get started with that <clears throat> to get started with that i'm going to screw these 
onto the floor where I've already pre-marked them in the in the top of the handrail, well the underside of the handrail. So I've got I've got my mark right here um, to put this. So this will go this will go right there like that. And then I'll do the same thing up top here. I've got it. It's hard to see it, but right there, I've got it marked. So I'm gonna put those in, and I'm unlike unlike the other side. I forgot to pull the tape before I shove the the rod in there i'm gonna screw these down and then once i screw them down then i'll pull the tape well i'm not gonna tighten them up i'll i'll put the hole in there first and then pull them back out pull the tape put them back in permanently and then i'll put the rod in so i'll show you that in a second Now that both of those are drilled, you know, throw this away now. Remove that. And then permanently install these. Because this is taller, um, it's gonna be a pain in the butt to do. But so just let me do it so y'all can see. Work. All right. So what I'm gonna do first is I've got this one lined up on there. I'm gonna hammer this one on, and because I cut this one a little bit shorter to get up under those other posts that were just a little lower. I still can't push this up high enough to, to get it on there. It's over halfway through. So, or halfway down. So, what I'm going to do is go this way with it, I guess. I guess I'll take the moon down from there. Now that that's lined up, you know, it's lined up in there, I can knock this board back out. And now it's seated in it, but the, it's still bowed up, so now I gotta knock it down. And that's it. So now that one's locked into place also. It's a little bit short at the top, you know, because I cut it down so I could use it as a jig on those corner, those ones where it was too low, but it doesn't matter. It's still locked in. It's just to help support the cables um, and it's not going anywhere. Oh, I need to get the tape out of this one. So I'll probably cut the cut around it and uh, I'll remove this tape and then we'll, uh, I guess we'll start laying out the cables, getting this figured out. All right. All right. So now that I've figured it out or figured out what I need to do, I'll show you all what I'm actually doing with these. Oh. The instructions are kind of unclear because I think they're made in China. Uh, but it wants you to turn these in by hand halfway. Um, so these are the right hand thread ones. Those are the left hand thread ones down there. They want you to turn them in halfway. I use the drill and I'll show you how to do it when I do these other ones. 
um, turn them in, turn, thread them in about halfway, cut the cable an inch and an eighth shorter than the total distance from post to post, uh, from post to post. Um, so I did that and I started cutting some of them. I've got them laid out over there on the floor. Um, while my buddy Kyle was here working on something else, um, I had him help me measure this long run. Um, so I need to start cutting those cables. But so here's the here's the first cable. I don't know if y'all can see it real good, but it's it's nice and tight. I mean, it vibrates when I pick it, but but I mean, I I think a kid could stand on that and and walk up it. Um, and I could probably go just a touch tighter. Um, but it's bottoming out on the on the turnbuckle, so I think I'm gonna stop there. Um, there's the little tool it's kind of a pain in the butt because it's got these little flats here and well I'll show you when I do one of the other ones but so you would catch it like this and turn it up it's offset to one side so it's uh, it's angled on the turnbuckle so then you gotta you have to take it off and come around to this side and drop in it and then you can go you can go around again and then catch it here hit it and then and then flip it and go around again this is if these none of these were in the way and you could spin it around it, it probably wouldn't be bad but unfortunately you got to use this one most of the time uh and this one on the floor was the hardest one i think so far well obviously it's the only one i've done so far but oh so anyway I'm going to show you what I'm doing on the next one up close uh, so that we can see me crimping it and uh, instead of being across the room on a time lapse. Uh, so I'll do that now and then we will, I'm going to cut one of the long ones because I want to, I want to thread one of those through and get that in. I think that's going to be pretty much all I'm going to do for tonight because this is going to take a long time crimping all these and it's already 5 30, 6 o'clock. I'm sure my family wants to eat dinner. I want to eat dinner. Um, so anyway, let me uh, let me grab another cable and we'll go ahead and get this one crimped in and I'll show you what I'm doing. Let's see, here's the one. All right, let me grab a cable. So uh, you, I'm feeding the cable all the way in and I'm using a number, I guess it's a number six die on this hydraulic crimper. And uh, my first crimp, make sure it's closed. My first one's going to be right here at the end. So I'll push it all the way in. And I'm, well, right now I'm using the floor as my support, but it's going to be a pain when I get going up higher because then I'm going to have to try to support it without wiggling and bending it. And that's already got it. I'm going to slack off a little bit and then move in a couple inches or an inch or so and then give it another crimp the only problem I'm seeing with this is this hydraulic crimper is curling the when it bends it it's it's bending one side more than the other and it's uh it's curling it down so like this, these ones are kind of bent. So when I stopped it, I stopped it with it turned up. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything I can do to change that. I think it's just these dies are cheap. Yeah, see, it's got a curve. It's curved going down like this. I don't know if. Well, maybe and you'll see that maybe I don't know if switching to the other side will make any difference and curve it back the other way it's a pain in the butt. I'm down too low to do it But, so that side's crimped. Now we're gonna go to the other side, do the same thing. Yeah. 
So just take the cable, feed it all the way in. Now that I've got the die locked on, I'm pushing in on it, on the cable. You gotta make sure that valve's closed all the way. So if it's not, it won't close it. It won't crush the die that last, that last little bit. show y'all when I first did the first one I thought man there's no way it is gonna take that much slack out of it and make it this tight but uh, I'll show you with the using this tool and stuff it definitely does it I don't know if y'all can see. Maybe move it. So I'm hitting it here. And then I'm trying to do it with my hand out of the way. And then I bring it up and try while well, I'm trying to do it with my hand out of the way so y'all can see. Bring it all the way around again. staring at my hand while I'm doing it. So and as you do one side, it uh, starts twisting the cable up. I'll show you that in a minute once I get a little bit further in with this. But that's why they make them left hand and right hand thread. So that way when you tighten one, it twists the cable one way, but then when you tighten the other one, it untwists the cable. So as long as you got them pretty much set halfway, you know, e e fairly equal on both sides, it'll straighten the cable back out enough that it, you're not going to have waves in it like I've got behind me. I'll show you in a second once I get this one turned in all the way. Well, I'm trying to show you this one in real time to show you kind of how long it really takes to do it. And... These ones I think are actually easier because I can stand on the steps beside it. So the ones going across the the front where I got to sit on the floor and doing it, I think those are going to be even worse. But it's just going to take time. So this one, the turnbuckle's bottomed out. Oh, just scratched the paint. All right, so now I'll show you um, how it's all wavy. Actually, I might need to. Take this one back a little bit because that's we'll go back a turn or so uh but then we'll tighten this other side let's see yeah y'all can see that and then this one's uh what am i doing I think that I've saw somewhere that they have a, um, and maybe not for this brand, but that they have a ratcheting one that you can like. It's an open, open uh, wrench that ratchets these. That would make it a world, 
you know, a ton faster and easier, but for the small amount that I'm doing, that's not necessary. Or, you know, doing them by hand like this isn't, isn't that bad. It's just slow going. I'll turn it down the cable so y'all can see see the cable still got some I don't know if y'all can see that or not but the cable still got some waves in it but as I as I start to tighten this one it's the, the twist is slowly coming out of it as it and then it's also tightening it up at the same time so it's it's gonna start uh, sound like a guitar string here in a second also oops almost there probably another turn or so on this one it'll be just as tight as that other one oops sorry fairly even if I'm going off of that. I'm going off the sound tone. So that's it. So that's it for those two. Um you know they're close to the same and I'll, you know, I'll adjust them a little bit as I go because I'm sure they're going to pull on the post a little bit as I go up and down. Um, but I want to get, I want to at least put one of those cables in. I want to see what that looks like. Um, so let me go ahead and get that cable cut. And then, uh, then I'll show you all that. Oh, yeah. Let me just, I'm going to cut it real quick and then I'll come back. All right. So. I'm locking these in to the drill and then one, two, three, four, and then using, using the drill to run them in about halfway and then let's see, try to do this one. and just crack the truck loose and pull it out I'm only gonna do this one for now uh, just because I want to see what this long cable looks like in there uh, so let me set this back further so you can see me fish it through
All right, so there it is loosely run. You probably can't see any of this. There it is loosely run. I'm gonna crimp this side and then go over there and crimp that side. That's gonna be hard to do. Man, I cannot push on it. That side's in. So those are in now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that one up and see what it looks like. Well, that's it for tonight. Um, there's that middle one in. Oh, you probably can't see it. I can't. So it's in there. I never did take that tape off, but the middle one's running in. So I'll probably do the rest of them um, on time lapse and just show you when it's done. All right, so now I have all the cables uh, fully crimped on all of them. Um, I had it, you know, I don't know if y'all can see this on video. So <clears throat> I started on this end and crimped them all the way down. I haven't tightened any of them yet. And uh, then I went and crimp, crimped the far end. And then I did uh, the right side of that one post for the short section last night. And then this morning I came back over and I just finished crimping that that you just saw. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and start tightening them all up. Uh, yeah, it's going to take a while because just using just using this little wrench. Um, I don't know if y'all. I don't know. Just using this little wrench, it's going to it's going to take a while. So I'm going to put you back on time lapse, and yeah, we'll put you back on time lapse. Uh, so you can see me tightening these things up. I'm gonna get them all adjusted and then I'll show you when I'm done 
and I'll try to show you the labels and stuff on these boxes once I'm all done. And then I'll in the in the description I'll try to um, put the links from the stuff I ordered on Amazon. Uh, I'll go back to my cart and find that stuff and put it in the description so you can see the stuff I used. You know, I bought 400 foot of the stainless steel cable. I would, you know, I'd have to measure and, and do the math on how much I used, but I've still got a lot of this roll left, uh, or not a lot, but I've got enough to do because I want to put a post down there at the bottom of the steps on this side and then tie it into the end of the end of the wall. So I'll have another set of, you know, another short set like this going down there. So I've got more than enough cable to do that. I've got, here's the, here's the box. Y'all you know, can see that. This is the, the stuff that I got. Um, T316 stainless steel left and right swage screws. One stop shopping store. Uh, swage lag screws, the hydraulic crimper. I didn't get the beveled protector sleeves, but I did get the eighth inch uh, wire cable. Uh, I didn't get adjustable turnbuckles, but I did get the protector sleeves for those. That's the ones I used in that center post. <clears throat> but they have a whole bunch of other stuff on there. But so I got the crimper from them. The when I bought the wire from the same place that came with the cutter. All the turnbuckles came with this. Like, I don't know if y'all can see that. It says Steel DN Mate, which is Steel DN Mate. That's there. That's them. Uh, so it's all, you know, everything came from, came from the same place. Um, anyway, I'll put the links in, in that stuff uh, at the end. Yeah, I can't remember how much I spent off the top of my head, but I'll, I'll add it in at the end. It wasn't a whole lot. I was pretty cheap, um, relatively considering some of these other ones are way overpriced, I think. For what you're getting um all this stuff looks really nice the cable's really nice um so yeah uh, i'm gonna tighten this stuff up put y'all on time lapse and then we'll come back and uh, look at it when it's all done Alright guys, well I'm finally done with the railing upstairs. It took a little longer than I thought it was going to. Um, but it came out pretty nice. There's a couple things I'm going to show you that I did wrong. Maybe not wrong, but I could have done differently. Um, but it all worked out. So when I measured... So the instructions tell you two different things on the same piece of paper. On on one side, let me show Let me find it and I'll show you. Where'd it go? All right, well, I was going to try to find the, the little little piece of paper instructions that this thing came with, uh, but they seem to have disappeared. But anyway, um, in the instructions on one side of the paper, it said to cut, to cut them an inch and a half shorter, post to post. And then it said to run the turnbuckles in halfway and then crimp them and then tighten them up. And I did, but on the other side of the piece of paper, it said cut them an inch and an eighth. So I tried the inch and an eighth, and when I did this short side, it worked perfect. The turnbuckles, right as you got to the, right as you got to the little adjuster, or the the flat on the turnbuckle that you can tighten it with with the spanner, it was bottoming out against the post. Worked perfect. On this longer run across the front. I did the exact same thing, inch and an eighth shorter, because it worked. It worked great on the other side. Why not? Why wouldn't it work on this side? Uh, on this side, I have actually had to. I got lucky that the where I'm crimping it, the spanner wrench will fit 
kind of on the um on the crimps so i could continue to use them as as a the flat to turn it in um these ones i should have cut them an inch and a half uh, because every one of these you can see on every one of these the the spot where excuse me the spot where the spanner is supposed to go is inside the wood now um on every one of them well this one's not this because this is the first one i put in it's tight tighter on that other side but almost every one of them's all the way in and they're still not as tight as well i mean partially because it's so long it's not going to sound as tight but if you if you hold this side and and strum it it's uh it's about as tight as the other ones are but yeah so that would that would be one thing i would have done differently i should have um i should have cut them an inch and a half shorter i think that would have been great and another thing i should have done was turn the when i was using the drill to put the put the turnbuckles into the wood first i should have ran them in a little bit further because it took a long time to tighten all these up i've i did the math on it i averaged about seven and a half to eight minutes per cable tightening it up now uh, which doesn't sound like a lot but um, when you're doing it a quarter turn at a time your hands get really tired of turning those or uh, holding that little spanner wrench and tightening it up uh, but anyway uh, i'm really happy with the look you know there's a couple of them that um i need to go back through i don't know if y'all can see it but like like this one when i crimped it it bent it like just the crimp in the metal like twisted it up so i need to go back through and with some pliers and kind of twist down on these to kind of straighten them up a little bit but another thing another thing it did um is it's pulling on the posts like it's separating a couple like this one because it was going into the edge of a knot right here like, i don't know if y'all can see that it's starting to uh it pulled the knot just a little bit as it was tightening up which i mean that's just the characteristic of the wood but you can see from tightening them up this was caulked and and smoothed and it opened the wood up and i've got screws going in in this way and in this way into the post or into the top board to uh lock them together and it's still pulling them apart you know obviously there's no screws back here pulling it together so there's really nothing i can do with that but it's pulling the post just a little bit so we'll see how that goes um everything else seems good i mean everything's nice and tight so nothing should go anywhere but i will i mean i was going to repaint the top these rails and stuff again anyway um and i scratched them up in some spots tightening these turnbuckles up so i'll uh i'll let it sit for a little while and then eventually i'll repaint because actually i use latex paint on these rails and i think i want to i got some black oil based paint i think i'm going to use just to um give it a little bit harder finish so a little more durable um but that's it so y'all can see um uh, that's i know it's hard to see on camera but that's the that's the look we got i'm really happy with it i can't wait to get the office and stuff finished so that way this area is done i can run a dust mop over the floor kind of yeah you know, i can't wait to get this stuff finished up like now now that it's safe to be a hangout area i don't feel you know i'm not so scared about the, you know my daughter hanging out up here or coming up here all the time because she likes coming up here um but yeah let's get a let's get a look from down below i mean it's hard to see obviously but i think it looks really good let me get back here further I don't know how much of that y'all can even see on camera but it doesn't uh doesn't really block the view much of looking up you know at all the cool stuff on the walls um which is what i wanted i wanted to stay kind of see through up there and turn the light off maybe you can see it better yeah you can kind of see the, the cables better now that the the light's not behind them too But I really like the look of it. I'm happy with it.
glad it's finally done. And I'm actually glad that I did get these um, aluminum supports to go in the middle of that those spots. I didn't want a big four by four blocking up that space, but that little one inch uh, or three quarter inch, whatever it is, um, aluminum uh, was a nice touch. I think it. I think that looks good. So I'm happy with that. I mean, it would have been nice, you know, if, if I had, it would have been nice if I had the money to spend on all of it when I was doing it. Uh, you know, it would have been nice to have gotten the aluminum frames or aluminum posts and they were already pre-drilled. But, you know, when you start doing that, the price kind of triples on all that stuff. Um, I'm going to go through and put the links to all this stuff in, um, in the description, but I'm going to go through and add it all up. But I want to say, including the wood to put these posts up, I'm probably under $400 in this whole project. Um, I'm pretty sure it's under that. And I've got a wire crimper that I can use for lots of other stuff. I've got that little angle piece that I, or gate or drill guide that I can use for other things. I've got a wire cutter that I can use for other things. So, plus I've still got probably a hundred to a hundred. I don't know. I'll add it up. I'll add this, these links up to figure out how much cable I actually used. Um, but I've got extra cable. I've got the extra turnbuckles. Like I said, I am, I do still want to put a post down here and, and, but I'm trying to think of how to do it. So the cables don't pull the post up. Um, I don't know. I'll figure something out. Cause it's not, you know, it's not a whole lot to bolt to down there. Um, like these ones, these, these posts have big uh carriage bolts going through through the beam that's holding this um through the beam that's holding all this up and then through the posts so it's got two carriage bolts this way and then out here on the face it's got two carriage bolts going through this post so you know they're, they're bolted on pretty solid um but that's all I can do when I put the one on the bottom is kind of carriage bolts on it too. So, um, not sure if I want to add a piece of metal to the bottom of the hand, like do the handrail just like these ones, but maybe put a piece of angle iron on the bottom of it and bolt it to the wall and to the bottom, uh, to the top of the post to kind of be a spreader for it. So it doesn't pull it. I, I mean, the, the wood on top should do the same thing, but, um, obviously the screws in the top of the board still give a little bit. So I don't know, we'll figure it out. Anyway, I'm probably talking way more than necessary and I'll probably edit most of this out. But anyway, that's uh, that's what it is. Uh, I'm real happy with it. I'm, I'm actually very happy with the way it's turned out. Besides a couple of these turnbuckles that are bent a little bit, um, it looks really good. I'm gonna straighten those up and uh, I think it's gonna look pretty sharp. Um, I never thought I'd do something fancy like this. So it's cool. All right. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you all like this. Um, if you did, give a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe. It's got lots of more cool stuff I want to do in the garage and around around the garage and stuff. And uh, lots of cool car projects coming up. And uh, something that I also have going on, I haven't talked about yet, but um, once I get uh, the last little bit of stuff moved out of the old garage, and another vehicle that's moved uh, to get moved out of there. That's a project I need to finish up. Um, I'm going to completely redo that garage to make it into a uh, like a workspace for my wife for her side business. She does t-shirts and um, tumblers and all kinds. She's got a, that CO2 laser up here in the front of the garage that's in here now that needs to get out of here. Uh, so I'm going to be doing building out a whole workshop kind of space for her in there. So that'll be something cool we'll do here in the coming months. Um, but anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment if you got something to say. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. All right, guys. I, I thought I was done with the handrail video, uh, but the other day um, I decided to, since I'd already finished that, I, I kind of just wanted to be over and done with all that stuff. So I decided to use some scrap wood that I had and build the handrail for the bottom of the steps. Of course, my post wasn't long enough to, my post was long enough if I was gonna bolt it, I'll show you in a second, that if I was gonna bolt it to the bottom step, 
it could sit on the floor and then come up to the right post height or rail height. But because I was using a leftover scrap of four by four post and it's, and it's also untreated, I didn't want that untreated post to sit on the floor, but also at the very bottom of the step, it's the end of the board. It's, uh, you know, or the end of this, the stringer for the stairs. And I didn't, well, one, I didn't have access to get to that. Um, I could get one or two bolts in it maybe, but I wanted to put three of them in there just to kind of, uh, stiffen the post up even more. Um, so I'm gonna turn it around. I'll show you what I ended up doing. I've got it already, uh, bolted on. I'm not really happy with it. Um, once I paint it, it'll kind of stuff will kind of blend in and not look as bad. I don't really like it. I kind of liked it better with nothing, but it needs something there. Um, I did put it one step shorter, so it's not at the bottom step, it's at the second step. And I did that for two reasons. I kind of wanted a, I kind of wanted more of an opening here in case there was something there or whatever that there's more room to, like if, if we want to bring a couch in or something, there's, there's room to bring it in this way and not get, you know, cause if this, if this was down here, then that puts the rail out here and it makes, it makes this space, I can't really, you know, if the rail was to come down to here, it just makes that space even tighter because that beam for the building sticks out. So I wanted to kind of keep a full four foot area open, especially cause I got the, the air conditioner up there. I'd like to keep as much room to come down low as possible to go up with something big. If there's ever anything big going up there, I don't know that there is uh, this piece of tape. I just use this as my template. I went up to the ones upstairs and just taped this down the side of the the post up there and marked where all the screws were and then put tape you know tape on here i put the i put that piece of tape on there and lined it up and and marked everything i already drilled two holes i used the i use this angle thing which is kind of a pain the the drill bit that i need to use is the wrong size or it's not tight enough on this hole so it's not a good it's not really a good guide um, I could use the next size smaller, but I don't have a bit that fits that tight. Uh, but it's got, I don't know if y'all can see that, it's got little lines at the bottom of it. So you would line that up with with the the line I've got going up and down. And then there's a line on the side. If, there you go. That you line that up. So you line those two up and you ideally you'd clamp it to something. But because there's a, a wall there, I can't really clamp this one on. So I'm just holding it tight and drilling those. Uh, so I drilled two of them so far. Um, you know with, with this bit the one that they the one that they supplied with it uh i'm gonna put y'all on and i did the same thing on this side i put the tape going down and marked them all um so i'm just gonna put you on time lapse real quick i'm gonna drill these and i'm just gonna do it uh, that's there's no point in showing you the whole process again um i'll do a little time lapse short short little thing with that and then uh i'll probably check the lengths of the cables and, and get all that measured and get everything cut and ready. But I'll probably, once I've, once I've drilled everything, I'll probably paint all this, caulk everything and paint it and get it ready. Um, something I did, so something I did do and it's ugly and I don't really like it. Uh, but once it's painted and it'll kind of blend in, um, is I put a metal bracket on underneath of this. So I got screws going into that and then I've got screws going into the top they're going into the top of the board into the post too so it's good and it's good and solid it's not going anywhere uh same thing with this post i mean you can barely wiggle it and it's it's just got these three uh carriage bolts going in um and going into the the uh, stringer uh you know it's kind of hard to get into that clot like into this closet i got insulation in there like the leftover insulation from the building in there and uh, so it's kind of hard climbing back in there past all that stuff to get there but that's i couldn't get to this bottom one like with the board that's bolted to the floor there wasn't going to be enough there wasn't going to be enough material here to bolt to so this one gave me a little bit more um and i didn't want to put the bolts too close to the top edge or the you know i didn't you know i probably could have measured them out instead of eyeballing them but i just it is what it is. Once they're painted, you're not going to see that stuff. And there is a metal bracket underneath of it also. I don't know if y'all can see that. There's a metal bracket underneath of it that's screwed to the screwed to the uh, stringer and then screwed to the bottom of the post. So 
I don't know that it's really doing anything, but it's something. Um, anyway, I'm not happy with this. Again, I'm not happy with this. I don't think it looks good at all. It's not the right way to do it. Um, I should have gone out and bought a, another post that was longer, put a floor bracket on it. And I may do that later on. Uh, I may redo this. Um, but for now, it is what it is. I'll uh, put lipstick on a pig and uh, try to hide as much of the ugliness by caulking stuff and painting it so it'll all blend in so you won't really notice any of it but um so i'll repaint that i'll paint that middle bracket gray so it blends in and then I'll, i'm gonna paint this black just like i did the the stuff upstairs i don't think i should paint it gray i think it'll, i don't know i'm not sure i'm gonna paint it black first if it looks weird down here i might paint it gray but i think i should paint it black i think we'll see all right anyway put y'all on time lapse i'm just going to try to do this real fast um that way i can start painting it um i don't even know if i'm going to show you a finished product and uh because it's probably going to take me the better part of this week by the time i wait for paint to dry and all that stuff to get this done it's already wednesday now so i've already got the, other, the this video edited for the most part what's well, been edited for over a week i just keep forgetting to uh actually post it um but then i started doing this and thought well, i'd wait a little bit longer but anyway um y'all are tired of hearing me talk uh let's just get this done real fast and uh i might show you it done or i might not i don't know we'll see you'll see it in another video if it's not so All right, guys, we're finally going to wrap this uh, video up with the the cables. Um, there we go. Uh, it's not perfect. Um, I shouldn't have. I used the 45 degree angle on that block that I was doing, and uh, it's not it's not a 45. Uh, so um, they're not perfectly lined up. I took a pair of pliers and kind of bent them back down or bent them up and down a little bit to like I still need to bend this one down a little bit i need to tweak them a little bit but it's good enough um so there it is all done it's got two coats of paint on it um i caulked all the screw holes and stuff twice uh sanded it twice um i still need to go back and paint the gray i'm gonna paint the gray around the like i think i'm gonna paint this the bottom of this bracket gray again and paint around the you know paint back around the the thing just so the board itself is black and not there's no gray on the or no black on the post uh, i think that'll look cleaner um and i got to touch up some white on the bottom here where i i smeared a little bit of black on it uh, but otherwise it, it came out pretty good you know the rail's nice nice and solid i mean it doesn't move i'm kind of wiggling on it hard you can't tell because i'm wiggling with the camera too but uh yeah worked out good you know the cables I didn't put them super tight because uh you know because it is only supported down there but i mean they're more than tight enough um so i think it came out good 
I'm glad I'm finally done with it. Using that crimper sucks. It's uh, it's really hard on your like arm joints and hand joints and stuff because it's um, it takes a lot of force to get that last little bit to completely crush it flat. Um, and uh, and it's just tedious turning those um, turnbuckles, um, especially the the left hand thread or I think it's the left hand. I don't know whatever whatever ones I had on the top because I it's like my brain stopped working and I'd be turning it for a while the right way and then all of a sudden it would I I don't know what would happen and I'd start turning it the wrong way I'm threading it again and it so it wasted time doing that uh, it seemed like every two or three turnbuckles I would do that halfway through one of them and turn it out a couple turns and then realize I was going the wrong way and and uh, have to start back over but anyway uh, everything's tight um, I'm really happy with it for the amount of money I spent on this, uh, you know, kind of can't beat it. Um, it's a lot better than wooden pickets. You can see through it. Uh, makes the place look a little fancier than it is. Um, but anyway, so there it is. Uh, you know, again, nothing fancy. I'm hoping you can see this one a little bit better since it's got the white wall behind it. I'm not really sure how this stuff's going to turn out on camera. Um, but yeah i'm very i'm real happy with it you know it's it's nice that you can see see down through it um yeah i still need to i still need to put a handrail on this wall i don't want to but uh my wife had just come up here a little while ago and, and looked at the stuff i had done upstairs and um uh, she rubbed her hand down the down the plywood wall and had a spot where there's like um some of these little like splinters that stick out or a little chunk not splinters but little chunks of wood that stick out and when i painted over them they kind of get sharp and hard like hard and she rubbed her hand across it and said something so i'll uh i'll put a handrail on there so that way people rub their hands on the rail and not the wall um which i mean i guess there probably should be one there anyway but anyway uh, I'm sure y'all are sick of hearing me talk. Uh, it's probably a pretty boring video. The editing on it's not going to be very good. Um, anyway, that's what I did. Um, hope y'all liked it, or at least got a little information out of it. And uh, there'll be some better stuff coming soon. This is just something, one of the projects I need to get done and out of the way. So, like and subscribe. Uh, you know, leave some feedback if you got some. All right, see you all on the next one.